the historical debate about Cleopatra's ethnicity and race has been a topic of discussion for many years. Cleopatra VII, the last active ruler of the Ptolemaic Kingdom of Egypt, lived during a time when Egypt was a crossroads of various cultures and peoples. The Ptolemaic dynasty, of which Cleopatra was a member, was founded by Ptolemy, a general of Alexander the Great, and the ruling class was of Macedonian Greek descent. While Cleopatra was born in Egypt, her ancestry traced back to the Greek Ptolemaic rulers. The depiction of Cleopatra's racial or ethnic identity has been influenced by artistic interpretations and cultural perceptions over the centuries. Many depictions of Cleopatra in ancient art and literature suggest that she identified with her Greek heritage, and she is often portrayed with features associated with Mediterranean or Hellenistic cultures. The controversy around Cleopatra's race gained renewed attention in contemporary discussions particularly in the context of representation and diversity in media and popular culture. Some argue that Cleopatra should be portrayed as a person of African descent, emphasizing the multicultural nature of ancient Egypt. Others point to historical evidence of her Greek lineage. It's essential to approach this topic with a nuanced understanding of historical context and recognize that racial and ethnic identities in the ancient world did not align with modern categories. Interpretations may vary, and discussions about Cleopatra's race often involve a mix of historical evidence, artistic representations, and contemporary perspectives on identity and representation. Let's look into the life and reign of Cleopatra and her tragic end, which also marks the end of the pharaonic rule in Egypt. Cleopatra VII, the Philippator, commonly known as Cleopatra, was the last active ruler of the Ptolemaic Kingdom of Egypt. Born in 69 BC, Cleopatra ascended to the throne in 51 BC alongside her brother Ptolemy XIII. However, political and familial conflicts led to Cleopatra's exile from Egypt. In 48 BC, Cleopatra returned with the help of Julius Caesar and the two became romantically involved. Cleopatra's association with Caesar created tensions in Rome, and after Caesar's assassination in 44 BC, Cleopatra returned to Egypt. She later formed an alliance with Mark Antony, a Roman general and one of Caesar's former supporters. Cleopatra and Mark Antony's relationship further complicated the political landscape. The couple had three children together, their union perceived as a threat by Octavian Caesar's adopted heir played a significant role in the unfolding events that led to the end of the Ptolemaic dynasty and the establishment of the Roman Empire. The Battle of Actium in 31 BC was a turning point. Octavian, later known as Emperor Augustus, defeated the combined forces of Cleopatra and Antony. Facing defeat, Cleopatra and Antony both committed suicide. Cleopatra died in 30 BC, traditionally said to have been by the bite of an asp, a venomous snake. With Cleopatra's death, Egypt became a province of the Roman Empire, marking the end of the pharaonic rule. The demise of Cleopatra and Antony marked the end of the Ptolemaic dynasty and the beginning of Egypt's integration into the Roman Empire. Augustus, now the sole ruler, became the first Roman emperor and Egypt became a crucial province in the empire. The death of Cleopatra is often considered a symbol of the end of ancient Egyptian independence and the beginning of Egypt's incorporation into the wider Roman world. Cleopatra's life is filled with intriguing details. Here are some fun and interesting facts about Cleopatra you would not learn anywhere except on this channel. Cleopatra was known to be fluent in several languages, including Greek, her native tongue, as well as Egyptian, Aramaic, Hebrew, and Latin. Legend has it that Cleopatra was renowned for her beauty, and she was said to have indulged in milk and honey baths. Some historical accounts also claim that she used a variety of cosmetics, including coal eyeliner. While popular belief is that Cleopatra died from the bite of an aspeed, you venomous snake, the actual species of the snake is uncertain. Some theories suggest it might have been an Egyptian cobra. Cleopatra is said to have had a love affair with Julius Caesar. According to some accounts, she asked for a lock of Caesar's hair as a keepsake. Cleopatra was known to be fascinated by Egypt's ancient history, and she identified herself with the goddess Isis. 
In a famous incident, she visited the Sphinx, and there are stories of her having the nose of the Sphinx restored. According to legend, Cleopatra had herself smuggled into Caesar's presence, rolled up in a rug. This is a dramatic and colorful tale, though its historical accuracy is debated. Cleopatra is said to have been knowledgeable about various medicinal herbs and remedies. She reportedly contributed to the development of certain cosmetic and pharmaceutical recipes. Cleopatra was known for her opulent lifestyle. One of the most famous stories involves a bet she had with Mark Antony over who could host the most extravagant banquet. Cleopatra won by dissolving a priceless pearl in vinegar and then drinking it. Cleopatra had children with both Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. After Caesar's assassination, she returned to Egypt and gave birth to Syrian, her son with Julius Caesar. It was after she had three children also with Mark Antony. Cleopatra has been a popular subject in art throughout history. Artists have portrayed her in various ways, often emphasizing her beauty and charisma. Paintings, sculptures, and coins have depicted her image. Let's explore how Cleopatra's relationship with Julius Caesar fueled significant growth in her kingdom and led to remarkable achievements in Egypt, positioning it as one of the greatest civilizations of ancient times. Her alliance with Caesar not only secured her return to the throne, but also ushered in a new era of prosperity and cultural resurgence for Egypt. Cleopatra's co-rule with her son, Ptolemy Exiv, and the eventual inclusion of Caesar marked a dynamic chapter in Egyptian history. As Cleopatra navigated the intricacies of governance, her commitment to economic stability bore fruit. The monumental infrastructure projects initiated during her reign were not merely symbols of grandeur, but practical investments that stimulated commerce and industry. The bustling city of Alexandria, under Cleopatra's guidance, became a center of trade and a beacon of economic strength. Cleopatra's cultural patronage, a hallmark of her leadership, extended to the intellectual and artistic spheres. The Library of Alexandria, once again a vibrant center of knowledge, drew scholars from far and wide. Artists flourished under her support, contributing to a cultural renaissance that transcended borders and enriched Egypt's identity. The blend of Greek and Egyptian influences in Cleopatra's court was a testament to her vision of a united and harmonious kingdom. The university she founded in Alexandria became a melting pot of ideas, fostering an environment where diverse perspectives converged and flourished. Cleopatra's commitment to education was not just an administrative duty. It was a reflection of her belief in the transformative power of knowledge. Her sponsorship of ambitious naval expeditions not only expanded Egypt's maritime reach, but also strengthened its role in global trade networks. Cleopatra understood the strategic importance of controlling key trade routes, and her efforts contributed to Egypt's prominence as a hub of economic and cultural exchange. Cleopatra's reign, however, was not without challenges. The shifting tides of Roman politics, particularly after the assassination of Julius Caesar, brought new complexities. The emergence of Caesarian, her son with Caesar, added a layer of legitimacy to her rule but also heightened tensions with Rome. In the face of political uncertainty, Cleopatra displayed diplomatic finesses. Her relationship with Mark Antony, one of the triumvirs ruling Rome, became both a personal and political alliance. The famous meeting between Cleopatra and Antony at Tarsus showcased not only her opulence, but also her ability to captivate and influence powerful leaders. The political landscape, however, grew increasingly precarious. So to end the debate as to whether Cleopatra was black or white, let's look at it as this. She was a member of the Ptolemaic dynasty, which was of Greek origin. The Ptolemies were descendants of Ptolemy, one of Alexander the Great's generals, and they ruled Egypt following Alexander's death. Given her Greek ancestry, it is likely that Cleopatra had a fair or olive complexion. However, ancient Egyptians had a diverse population with varying skin tones. The modern concept of race, especially in terms of black or white, may not be directly applicable to the way people were perceived in the ancient world. Historical sources from Cleopatra's time do not provide specific details about her physical appearance, focusing more on her intelligence 
political acumen, and relationships with influential figures. Ancient depictions, such as coins and sculptures, often idealize beauty and may not necessarily reflect an accurate likeness.